It's 52 days to Ghana's elections and Ghana Web is pleased to bring you the first episode of Ballot Briefing, a bulletin that will give you updates on every election-related activity ahead of the December polls. My name is Patricia Roxon Hammond and in our first story, Ghana's parliament resumed sitting on Tuesday with calls from the minority side for the speaker to declare four seats vacant. The minority in parliament has stated that the new patriotic, new patriotic Party caucus of the House no longer has the basis to hold itself as the majority caucus. Addressing the floor on Tuesday, the minority leader, Dr. Cassell Atoforsen, outlined that three members from the House, that is the MPP side, as well as an MP from the opposition, that's the NDC caucus, have rendered their seats vacant by deciding to file as independent candidate for the upcoming elections. Both sides of the House had time to debate the issue and hear our excerpt of the debate. Quite honorable speaker, we therefore call on you to enforce the existing ruling of this House based on Article 971G and H. That decision, Mr. Speaker, applies to all four ex-members of Parliament, namely Honorable Peter Kwachiaka, Honorable Andrew Amuaku Esiama, Honorable Cynthia Mamle Morrison, and Honorable Kodo Asante. Right, Honorable Speaker, this means that currently we do not have an independent member of Parliament the MPP have only 135 members of parliament, having seen two of their members contested as an independent candidate, and the NDC has 136 members of parliament. The speaker having lost one member. Therefore, the MPP group, Mr. Speaker, cannot continue to hold themselves as the majority caucus of this house. With the greatest respect, honorable minority leader, if you want to invoke the rule, invoke it rightly. What you are trying to do by inviting Mr. Speaker to make a ruling has to do with a statement. The provision does not clothe you with that power to make that application. And that you should get it. Mr. Speaker, the, the provision that you quoted, you got it completely wrong. You got your rule wrong. And you should know this. Mr. Speaker, the minority is in disarray. The majority leader is behaving in a manner that then opens up parliament to scrutiny, especially when we have not yet to, I mean, taken a decision. What he's simply doing is that he's asking the courts to basically guard parliament. Mr. Speaker, do not allow yourself to be guarded. None of the two members of parliament have said that they are seeking to remain in parliament as independent members. They are still MPP members. They are still MPP members. And you suggest, Mr. Speaker, it is suggested to us, it is suggested to us that the minute you file under the MPP's constitution, it means you are no longer a member. That is wrong. Moving on, the majority leader of parliament, Alexander Afenyu Markin, has filed a suit at the Supreme Court invoking the court's jurisdiction in interpreting some provision of Article 94 of the Constitution. Addressing the media during a leader's media briefing in parliament on Tuesday, the majority leader disclosed that he has also replied, he has also applied for an injunction to stop the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Gagbin, from declaring some four parliamentary seats vacant. Members of my caucus who have filed to go independent for the next election have not written to me as the head of the caucus to say that they are no more part of the caucus. So as far as I'm concerned, the caucus remains intact. And I believe that some of these controversies are better settled by the courts. So in my capacity as the majority leader, I have filed a writ at the Supreme Court. Parliament has been duly served. There is an injunction application also attached to the writ also duly served. Therefore, I believe that if we are going to respect the law, uh, this matter will be placed on ice until the Supreme Court determines. 
Meanwhile, the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Gwagbin, has deferred his ruling on an application by the majority leader to declare four seats vacant. According to the Speaker, he will use the next few days to write a thorough ruling on the matter, which was moved by Minority Leader Keso Atufosen on Tuesday. I have listened to the comments from members after the minority leader submitted before the House a statement under Order 93. Both the statement and the comments have raised quite serious issues of procedure and substantive law. And I think I need time to go through them. Because what I believe is that do unto others as you want others to do unto you. And when you plant evil, you reap evil. And so, I want to take a few days to submit a reasoned ruling in this matter. So, Ghana Web's parliamentary correspondent, George Acey, joins me in studio to help us understand what's going on in Parliament. Hi, George. Hello, Pastor. What's really happening? Can the, can the Speaker of Parliament declare a seat vacant when the person is not dead? Yes. What's, what's really happening? Help us understand. Um, so, how we got here, um, over the weekend, the former minority leader, Haruna Idrisu, was somewhere up north, and he had hinted on um, the decision by his caucus to move for this whole uh, thing, he had stated that they will be um, calling on the speaker to declare the seats of some members, vacant. three from the ruling party MPP side and one from the NDC side, vacant. Okay. And true to his words, when the my majority leader met the uh, media on Tuesday, he told us that he had received a memo to that effect that some uh, petition like that had been filed. And that he, in, in preempting, has also filed a suit at the Supreme Court asking the court to interpret um, Article 97 um, G uh, and H in that regard. Then fast forward, we move to the chamber and then Atto Fossin, the minority that, leader himself, mm -hmm. moved that the speaker, in regards to what has developed um, ahead of the election, declares some four seats. We are talking about uh, Amenfi. Yeah. We are talking about uh, Formina where Andrew Amwakwe Siyama is the current MP. He contested the, contested the last election independent. Mm -hmm. And he is a particular, um, a particular case in all of this because back in 2020, he contested independence. And ahead of the election, the MPP, the party he had left, wrote to the speaker asking the speaker to declare his seat vacant, vacant. invoking the same Article 94. Mm -hmm. And the speaker, then Speaker Okwe, did heed to the uh, motion and indeed declared the his seat vacant. vacant. So okay. this, that has become the bedrock of the NDC's petition right now. So they're standing on that to make yes. sure that all yes. those who are standing, uh, who are contesting as independent yes. candidate seats are declared vacant. Yes, and to be clear, we are talking of um, um, Peter Yaokwache Aka of uh, 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 Amenfi Central, yeah, Amenfi Central yeah. Suhum Kojo Asante, and then we have Cynthia Mamle Morrison, the yeah. former uh, minister. Yeah. And then uh, Amwaku Esiama, as I stated. Now, those from the MPP side, they are all going independent. And then we have um, two of them are going independent. Mamle Morrison and the yeah. Suhum MP are going independent. And then Amwaku Esiama is now contesting on the ticket of the MPP. He is actually the um, independent candidate in uh, in this mm -hmm. parliament. And you know this party, this parliament has some level of um, um, peculiarity. In terms of numbers, we have 137 on both sides, the mm -hmm. NDC and the MPP. Yeah. And then uh, Formina becomes the split in between, and he decided to caucus with the MPP. Mm -hmm. And having been with them all this, I think the yeah. decision was that he would now contest as the party's candidate. So okay. that is where we so, find So And then uh, we also heard that Cynthia Morrison, the injunction has been lifted. Yes. So she can so now go ahead and... The MPP 
had gone to court to ask the court to stop to her from contesting as at an the independent level. candidate. And this case yeah. is happening at the um, uh, at a lower court yeah. in the constituency, but then the court just yesterday lifted the that injunction, yes. so she can go ahead and contest. Yes. Yes. Do you have any idea why they are? deciding to to go independent and not join the ruling government well it has to do with what, their personal what, what, reasons what transpired during their um party primaries okay a lot of them or almost all of them felt um mistreated some of them lost actually and some of them feel like they were not treated right so they internal like, wrangling yes yes but as i, I explained earlier amwa quincy Amas case is that he's rather rejoining the party so you were in Parliament yesterday. Uh, there was I, I heard there was a heated argument with even Apenyo you marking <laughs> um, saying that someone called him Markins and he he, he took offence with that. Uh -huh. But what 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 really happened? Um, so when the motion was moved by the minority leader, obviously the majority leader will be the first person to yeah. respond. And like I said, he pointed to a lot of things. His the the need for the court to interpret the constitution proper. Mm -hmm. He believes that. In his own words, he believes that if a true interpretation is given to the constitution, what the minority will, are looking for will not be fulfilled. Again, okay. he says as part of his application for injunction, it will not be proper for the um, for the speaker to take the win out of the sale of the court. Mm -hmm. And so he should rather hold off and wait for the court to decide. Of course, Before there were, yes, there were the um, arguments and counter arguments, mostly from members of the bar in the house, I mean, mm -hmm. lawyers yes. in the house, you know how Arguing it goes. Out their points. Yes. But then, particularly, we had um, MP from the NDC side, Cletus Avoka, mm -hmm. who more or less deviated from the legal point of view and argued the whole thing on logic and um, reasoning. Mm -hmm. That, look, you say it is not, it is just okay, uh, the whole decision to contest is for the next parliament. But these are people that are being sponsored by the party. Mm -hmm. So Amakwe Siyama, for instance, is being sponsored in the name of the MPP to contest the election. Mm -hmm. And con the constitution, that is Article 94, says as the person, when the person decides that they want to contest for a particular party, they should vacate. Mm -hmm. And so it was uh, an interesting um, debate. So um, I know Apenyo Makin is suing the speaker, speaker yes. based on this. Yes. Okay, so um, the speaker says he needs time to totally come up with yes. the conclusion, yes. what, what do you think we should expect from him? So, um, actually, the speaker, from his indication, has already made his mind up as to what it is. We are yet to find out. But then he says he needs time to write a very thorough and reasonable um, ruling to mm -hmm. back his, his yeah. position. And so, because of that, he has he deferred the ruling. Most likely, Friday, the ruling will come so out. So, we we'll get and to know... Yes, before he, he, he would dismissed the house, he made a profound statement, kind of. He said, if you sow evil, you reap evil. Obviously. As to what interpretation who, who everybody will give to it related to what he is going to decide, it is it is, it is a matter of the public and everybody else to decide. We'll wait to see what happens on Friday. Sure. Until then, thank you very much. Thank you. And that's my colleague, George AC. He is our parliamentary correspondent. Moving on, the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Jane Mensa, has announced that the final votes registered for the 2024 presidential and parliamentary elections will be ready in the first week of November 2024. Jane Mensa made this announcement at the IPAC meeting on Tuesday. Starting today, Tuesday the 15th of October 2024 to Saturday the 19th of October 2024, all registered voters will have a second opportunity to review their details online and report issues they may find to our offices in the districts where they registered. The re-exhibition of the Provisional Voters Register has never happened before. Indeed, this is the first time once again, we encourage all voters and registered, registered voters and political parties to take the time and effort to review their details and report any issues they may have with their details before Saturday, the 19th of October, 2024. It is important to note that after Saturday, the 19th of October, the Commission will no longer receive complaints on discrepancies from the general public and from the political parties. However, voters can still continue to check their details online and on the Commission's website at no cost to them. 
it is free of all charges. Moving on, registered voters can check their details on the Provisional Voters Register for the 2024 general elections via the short code star 7115 hash or on its website ec.gov.gh. That's free of charge. The Electoral Commission at the IPAC meeting held on Tuesday demonstrated how this can be done. The exhibition is being done by electronic media. We have a USSD short code, uh, star 711, star 51 hash. And that should give you a prompt that you can enter your, um, your voter number in. And then an SMS will be sent to you with your voter details, confirming whether you are a valid voter, whether you are uh, on a multiples list, exceptions list, all those details will come out for you to see. We're still on the IPAC meeting held on Tuesday. The Ghana Freedom Party, that is GFP, Presidential candidate Ikria Donko has threatened to sue former President John Jomani Mahama. According to Ikria Donko, the potential suit will demand an explanation from Mahama, who doubles as the flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, over his recent comments that some of the 2024 presidential candidates shouldn't have been qualified by the Electoral Commission to contest the elections. She also accused John Mahama of having a hand in the death of president, the former president, John Evans Arthur Mills. Hence, the court must probe. I can't tell you one day. I'm telling you, 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 I am to let you say, and you pass your family. Now, my young partner, and I said, in Trigana, my mamma, I said, the local court, you see me in Penny for my mamma, that's that. So, I check me, 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 and still on elections the chairperson of the national commission for civic education catherine adi has emphasized the need for a sensitization exercise to educate Ghanaian voters on the importance of casting their vote to elect a capable leader catherine adi stated that it is essential for the populace to understand the negative impact of election related violence and the consequences of selling their vote to the highest bidder she shared this information with Ghana Web during the NCC's engagement with residents of Medina on election-related matters. NCC is a community-based organization, it's a district-based organization, it's a grassroots organization. So in all the work that we are doing across the country, in all the districts, we are highlighting this same message that people should think about this election season. Because this election season, we don't want to lose any lives. We don't want to shed any blood. One of the things that we've highlighted with them, with the, with the, with the participants, is that if you lose a limb and you lose an eye, or you get hurt, or you lose your life, even if your party wins, you've still lost parts of your body or you've lost your life. So you haven't gained anything. We also explain to them that fighting does not attract votes to your party. 
actually fighting will rather make your party unattractive so don't listen to those who come and give you weapons and uh, pay you to go and cause trouble to go and make problems for other people because the actual fact is that if you want your party to win fighting is not what will get you there the flag bearer of the liberal party of ghana lpg Kofi Agbanu Akbalu has expressed confidence in winning the December 2024 general elections. During an interview with Ghana Web TV's election decks with Maoli Aholumaga, Akbalu shared that he received a revelation from God in 2010 indicating that he was going to become the president of Ghana. This election, I'll win the election. You are very sure? Yeah, 100%. I'll win it. How sure are you you can win this Yeah, election? because I've been ordained as president of this country. You've been ordained? Yeah. By who? By God Almighty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, because you see, God runs the affairs of men, you know, mm -hmm. and then he decides who to be the leader at the point in time. Mm -hmm. So uh, God spoke to me on the 10th of March 2010. That was why I started this journey. Oh, so you had a call from God. Yeah, all God the way spoke back. to me in my mm -hmm. dream that yeah. Kofi have made you president of Ghana mm -hmm. on the 10th of March 2010. 11th of March, 12th of March, and 13th of March, 2010. Four consecutive days. And then, that's why I started this journey. Mm -hmm. And God has been good to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, this election, I'm winning uh, because everything uh, indicates that what I saw in my dream has come to pass. Mm -hmm. Watch Akpalu's full interview and many others on our channel, Ghana Web TV. Subscribe to the channel, like and share our videos. And here is where we end today's bulletin. Join us again next week for more updates. My name is Patricia Roxon Hammond.